Good Tuesday morning, I'm KHU 11 meteorologist Kim Castro. Here's the latest on Hurricane Barrel. As of the seven o'clock morning update, it is still a category five hurricane with sustained wind speeds of 165 miles an hour. It's dropped in pressure, now 934 millibars, and it continues to track to the west northwest at 22 miles an hour, making impacts right now to Puerto Rico. The outer bands bringing down heavy downpours and some gusty wind will be uh, concerned with them and then coming up next, Hispaniola. Uh, we'll be watching the Dominican Republic as well as Haiti for some impacts with the outer bands too. And then a second landfall from Hurricane Barrel expected as early as tomorrow lunchtime time frame. So again, Hurricane Barrel, still a very, very powerful storm, a well-defined eye. You'll notice some of its convective bands towards the outside starting to remove from the center of the storm. Barrel is on track to weaken as we go throughout the day. From a Category 5 storm to Category 4 as it tracks south of Hispaniola, eventually when it makes its second landfall in Jamaica, it's still expected to be a major hurricane at a Category 3 strength, but continuing to drop in intensity. Category 2 as it passes through the Cayman Islands, and then once it continues to race towards the Yucatan, expected to make its third landfall. Uh, in the major Yucatan area, so from Tulum towards Cancun, that is expected early Friday, so overnight Thursday into Friday. Beyond that, the National Hurricane Center expects Barrel to lose quite a bit of intensity and continue its path towards the Gulf as a tropical storm. There's a lot of uncertainty once we get into this time frame. For now, let's talk about uh, the active warnings right now. Tropical storm warning for Hispaniola, the Dominican Republic, and Haiti, and then a hurricane warning for landfall impacts for Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, under a hurricane watch. So technically, this would be making four landfalls, first in the Windward Islands, then in Jamaica, then in the Cayman Islands, then in the Yucatan, so Mexico. Um, so we'll, we'll have to watch that track and see any updates from the National Hurricane Center, but on track to make quite a few different land impacts over the next couple of days. Finally today, Barrel is moving into a less favorable atmospheric environment. So far in its life cycle, it's stayed pretty free from wind shear. Now that the Caribbean is a little bit more hostile, we've got surface winds that are squeezing and upper level winds that are diverging. And so it is going to encounter some sort of disruption as it passes south of the Hispaniola and tracking towards Jamaica. So throughout its path, it'll have combative winds. What happens once it makes those land interactions, once it experiences that wind shear as it gets to the Gulf, is still yet to be seen. We'll have to watch it through the next couple of days and we've got a number of different scenarios. The spaghetti plot models all over the board. This uncertainty is a huge margin. So again, depending on how far north it tracks or how far south it tracks will determine what sort of a path it takes once it crosses the Yucatan and heads into the Gulf. But right now models are trying to come to some sort of a consensus that would be the northern portion of the Mexican coastline that we would have to monitor. The steering currents are going to see a shift, which is why there's a lot of uncertainty in the Gulf. So right now, high pressure is over Houston, and that's keeping those temperatures warm. It's keeping the humidity high. However, that's going to start to shift towards the east. So that's a snapshot at Wednesday morning. What's significant about this is when high pressure shifts to the east, there's no more kind of dome of protection over the northern portion of the Gulf. In fact, high pressure focuses along the Florida Panhandle, and that means that there's a little bit of an opening here for uh, these Gulf Coast communities. So that's why watching Barrel and seeing what sort of steering track it'll take, will it deviate towards Tampico, where we saw Alberto go, where we saw Tropical Storm Chris go? That's an option. If it tracks a little bit further north, it could have a little bit more of a northerly trajectory in the Gulf too. So watching uh, the potential of the southern coast of Texas, Brownsville area, potentially seeing some remnants of whatever's left over of barrel. We'll have to keep an eye on it right now. Based on the positioning of barrel, 
We have six days to watch the forecast for any impacts of the continental US. And so with this much of a heads up, we've got plenty of time to prepare. So that means right now we should be thinking about what our impacts are. Do you live along the coastline? If you do, make sure you've got an evacuation plan in order. This is also true if you're planning on vacationing along the coastline or you have a vacation home that you spend your time at during the summer months. Think about what the plan is if we do see barrel continue its path in the Gulf and if that path is a little further north towards the Texas coastline. If you live in an inland area, we know what happens with these tropical systems. We could lose power. So try to think about how you can mitigate that, how you can better prepare. That would mean, you know, filling up your gas tank, making sure you've got supplies like water, food, any medicine that you might need, at least a five day supply of that. And then, yes, watching the forecast closely at least once a day so you can get an update on how barrel is evolving, what sort of strength it's at, what the path that it's taking, and how, how that is going to continue as it passes through the Caribbean into the Gulf. I will watch it closely. I'll have updates on all my social media pages. You can find me. These are my handles. I even have some bilingual uh, forecasts on all of these uh, pages. So whatever you prefer, make sure you catch the forecast updates throughout the day.